Okay, so DJI has just sent out a teaser for the Osmo Action 6. Now, one of the features that has been uh, rumoured about the Osmo Action 6 is the inclusion of a real iris. Now, the current rumours are that it varies between F2 and F4, and this would seem to be borne out by the imagery that DJI included with their teaser promotion. Uh, the camera is going to be announced on the 18th of November, I believe, and the image shows the lens and what looks to be an iris. Now, although the position of the iris does look a little strange, uh, the animation on DJI's website would suggest this is exactly uh, where it is. So it'll be interesting to see how this functions in reality. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail on things like sensor size and resolutions and frame rates. You know, there are lots of rumours out there, but with action cameras, we always get rumours of one-inch sensors and 8K resolutions and, 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 so, and such like. Um, but when it comes to this iris, the rumour does seem to be borne out by the imagery um, that DJI has sent out. So I'm going to focus on that rather than some of the other um, things that you might have heard about. Even though you know they might be credible, they might not be. But at least with this one, we have some hint that it is actually true. So usually with action cameras, I tend to believe that the simpler the better. If you start putting mechanical things into an action camera, that is something extra to go wrong, particularly in the kinds of situations that action cameras are placed in. You know, for example, off-road buggying and mountain biking, there's a lot of vibration going on, and that kind of movement can damage something like a very tiny uh, mechanical iris. Now, there are other methods now that have been developed for creating um, an, an adjustable iris within um, tiny cameras like this. So it remains to be seen what DJI has come up with. Um, I would imagine that they've done some testing and have determined that it can withstand uh, quite a lot of um, high impact movement, being as it is an action camera. Um, so it does remain to be seen how they've actually achieved that and what the real world reliability um, of it will be. Now, what are the advantages of placing a form of adjustable iris inside an action camera rather than just adjusting the shutter, which we have been doing up until now? Now, the rumoured iris within the Action 6 is only said to be variable between F2 and F4, and that's quite a limited range. So again, it remains to be seen how effective this thing is in, in, in the real world. But the idea of having a mechanical iris is a fairly sound one. It does mean that if you are somebody who is more creative and you want more control over the image, you can set the shutter speed at the speed that you want and you can adjust the iris to adjust your exposure rather than having to mess around with ND filters. Now with the limited iris range that the camera is rumoured to have, you'll probably still need ND filters in very bright sunlight. Um, but it could be advantageous um, and save a lot of time in general in, in, a, in a lot of situations. You might only need to put one ND filter on and then you've got that control that you need and without having to keep swapping them over. The other advantage of having some sort of iris is that if the Osmo Action 6 does have a larger sensor, let's say it does have a one inch sensor in it, then being able to stop down means that you can increase uh, the depth of field. And that is an issue if you have a larger sensor on an action camera. Anybody who has used uh, Insta360's 1R and 1RS with the one inch mod will tell you that vlogging with it was pretty difficult because it didn't have very good close focus on it. So with an adjustable iris, it means that that kind of problem might be mitigated to some degree. Again, we'll need to see what the final camera is like, what it's like to use um, in real in the real world. But um, that is a potential advantage of having um, a mechanical iris on this camera if it does indeed have a larger sensor. So there's one other rumour that's going around with the Osmo Action 6, and that is 
onboard ProRes recording. Now, I have my doubts about this, but the rumours are quite prevalent. Um, the one thing I would say is that if ProRes does feature on the Osmo Action 6, I wouldn't get your hopes up for ProRes RAW being on it. Um, you know, it is perfectly credible that you could put ProRes recording on that camera. Um, but in terms of core users, it's not really a feature I can imagine the majority of people who buy that camera using. So again, it's not impossible. I'm not I'm not completely writing it off um, as a possibility, but I am still a bit on the fence. I, th I think I don't think that it is likely. But again, I've been proven wrong about things in the past uh, with regard to these cameras. So let's see what it brings. It would be um, a nice touch if they did include it. Um, you know, particularly with the 10 bit recording and the log recording on the camera, ProRes would give some very, very specific advantages. You wouldn't have um, as many compression artifacts going on. It'd be a lot cleaner um, and it would be much more gradable. The downside, of course, is that it takes up a lot more um, card space and storage space. So, you know, it's going to be a, a trade off. And with these cameras being often used for extended periods of time, um, you might need a lot of storage to carry around with you. So those are the two significant rumours about the camera. I hope that DJI has taken on board what manufacturers like Insta360 have been doing in terms of wind reduction for the audio, the onboard audio. The other thing I am hoping that DJI addresses is this HDR style processing that's going on in its current crop of cameras. Now, the Pocket 3, which I'm using at the moment to film this, is produces a really nice image, and the Osmo Action 4 produced a really nice image. The Osmo Action 5 started using this um, HDR-style tone mapping process that you can't switch off. And the colour science, I didn't think was as good as the Osmo Action 4, um, I found that the Osmo Action 5 Pro, the image looks a bit too electronic, even when you dial the sharpness right down. It doesn't have this smooth, or more organic look that the GoPro does. It looks, still looks overly sharp, and foliage on trees, particularly in bright sunshine, tends to take on an almost fluorescent green look. So I'm hoping that... While DJI might have added these features like a, a variable iris and ProRes recording, I hope it hasn't forgotten about the colour science. I hope that it's gone back to the drawing board with that and taken on board what a lot of users have been finding with the Osmo Action 5 and, you know, redeveloped the colour science. Because on previous cameras, as I say, on the Osmo Action 4, I think they really nailed it. Um, but it sort of went downhill a bit with um, the Osmo Action 5 Pro and also the Osmo 360 as well. That suffers from a, a similar kind of issue when it comes to the way colours are represented and that kind of over electronic looking image. You know, if I dial down the sharpness on these cameras, I want it dialed down. I don't want any extra processing going on. Um, so... Yeah, I hope DJI has addressed the basics in, in that way and not just focused on introducing these, you know, headline grabbing features. Because if the Osmo Action 5 had better colour science, then it would be my favourite action camera. But for me, even though the GoPro you know, doesn't have a low light mode and isn't very good when it gets to low light, for me, the colour science on the GoPro wins out every single time. So let's just hope that DJI has 
um, address that in your Osmo Action Pro, regardless of how many headline grabbing features like a adjustable iris um, the new camera has. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Um, I have rambled a little bit. Um, I just wanted to give you my so called quick thoughts on the Osmo Action 6 as I see them presented. I've got a few things I need to review and get up on the channel. I've got the Insta360 X4 Air, which I'm looking at, uh, the DJI Mic 3, which I've been meaning to get the review done on that for ages, but I've just had so much stuff on, and the Insta360 Mic Air as well, along with a couple of other things. So um, that's all to come on the channel. Um, and I'm also planning some more feature videos, uh, mini documentary style stuff that goes into stuff like the history of camera movement and, and that sort of thing. So that's what I've got planned. And yeah, um, I'd be interested in your thoughts on the Osmo Action 6 in the comments below. Um, yeah. And again, if you like what I do and you want more videos, please do like and subscribe. I've kept this to the end. I've taken on board what you guys have said. You don't like me saying it at the beginning. Okay, um, hopefully see you in the next, in the next video.